Then, of course, I found over the years I was working on things like the origin of the universe, the nature of time, the nature of consciousness has always fascinated me. Things which for uh, centuries or millennia have been exclusively the province of priests and philosophers, but I was coming at them from a scientific point of view, along with many of my colleagues. And so inevitably, we were raising again those age-old questions of existence. How did the universe come to exist? Uh, how is it going to end? What is the place of human beings in this great uh, scheme of things? Is there a meaning to it all? So it was quite natural to then reapproach this subject of science and theology from the scientific side. It's a matter of science and a matter of observation to determine whether what we call the universe is all there is, and it has an ultimate origin in space and time at the Big Bang, or whether it is a small component in this larger assemblage. Maybe tough to determine observationally. And, but and then the nexus with theology comes whenever you are forced to stop, whether the, this Big Bang was the origin or you go back an infinite time and you have to evaluate why does this whole thing exist. That's where theology would make it stand, so to speak. I think there's a real issue here about the nature of time, but it has to do with this whole business of origins, because uh, most people, I think, in the, the, the popular imagination, that the problem of science and theology is the problem of how did it all begin? People say, well, you sound is very clever, um, but uh, you can't explain what made the Big Bang or what happened before the Big Bang, as if that somehow undermines the whole scientific agenda. And the implication is, well, God made the Big Bang go bang. Uh, but actually, it's a very bad theology, the idea that there is a pre-existing sort of cosmic magician who is there within time for all eternity, and at some particular moment thinks, oh, I'll make a universe, and then presses a button and bang, there's the universe. I think that's an idea that serious theologians abandoned a long time ago. But most people don't understand that. Most people think, uh, that the universe could not come into existence at some particular moment without having a causative agent, some body or something there before it to make it happen. But Einstein told us that time, like space, is part of physical reality and the origin of the universe, the ultimate origin, would involve the origin of space and time as well as matter and energy. Uh, and so uh, we can't really use the normal terms of causation uh, we can't talk about what happened before the Big Bang in that picture because the Big Bang is the origin of time. Um, and so you have to go to a more sophisticated uh, position and say, well, we can imagine uh, that there might be uh, something like a god or a creator who is outside of time altogether, as in classical Christian theology. But now we're talking not about causation in the usual sense, uh, but about explanation. Why is there a universe? Why does it have the laws that it does at all times? And so we're thinking about something which is timeless, uh, which is underpinning physical reality, guaranteeing its lawfulness. That, that's something that comes quite close, I think, to uh, sophisticated modern theology, but it's a long way from popular religion. And I'm not sure that this entity, which is responsible for keeping the universe in being at all times, really comes very close to the personal God of popular religion.